simulation world trying something a little bit different today I thought I'd try a vlog and uh, see how this goes you can I suppose consider it as one of the many different and new things that I'm trying out uh, as components of the new website and I certainly hope that the new site is working out well for all of you um, part of the I guess inception of this whole thing uh, with the blogging is I got some feedback that I should consider doing newsletters and I assume all of you would agree that I think I do enough writing during the week, right? But what is easy is to run my mouth for 10 minutes. That I can do. I have time for that. So that's why I thought I'd try something new. So uh, I've just got a list of things here that I think I would probably cover, um, say 10 minutes. Um, so the new website, uh, when it first launched, there were a number of issues um, and uh, definitely a lot of feedback in terms of things that I should probably do differently or decorate differently and so on and so forth. But uh, and I have addressed, I think, a number of those issues. What's left now is if there's any more bugs in the system. So uh, the feedback has tapered off quite a bit. And I haven't really heard anything else negative, just a couple of small things here and there. So uh, definitely if it's not working out for you, depending on where in the world you are, definitely shoot me an email at airdailyx at gmail.com so that I can have a look and hopefully make any improvements. But so far, it seems like the new website is working out for all of you, so that's a great thing. Hopefully by the end of February, uh, I will move it out of the beta and it will be uh, official. So again, anything in between now and then or even after, do send me an email. Uh, so yes, if you are watching the blog today, which is the 20th of February, 2014, I did go into a little rant in regards to Amsterdam and for some reason I don't understand why we haven't had that airport done properly yet uh, the cloud nine version was done a long time ago and it is definitely in need of some proper workmanship so uh, as I was just typing along suddenly I find myself going off into this crazy rant which I think is true I think for a lot of you I think a lot of us are waiting for that airport to be done properly and uh, hopefully someone will arise to the task I definitely like the way flight being did Dulles with the interior modeling and everything else, I think they did a very, very good job on that. So to see that kind of quality applied to Amsterdam, I think would be tremendous. So maybe someone's working on it, maybe not. Flight Beam is definitely working on a side project, the unknown project. Uh, and who knows, maybe that could be it, maybe not. Don't want to get anyone hopes up. So I guess we will have to see. Uh, I did get a lot of complaints back in the past, I'd say last year, about why do I follow developments on FS Developer. These, this place is only for people who are working on their own projects and need help and so on and so forth. Why, why are you following these people? And I wanted to just respond on behalf of that briefly. I think I have not only discovered, I think, a lot of great talent at FS Developer, but a showroom is just that. It's a showroom. That's a place to show off projects. And Whereas a number of projects from the FS developer do not typically come to fruition, the few that do tend to be very, very good, especially a lot of the things like uh, MSK, for example. Uh, this is one developer whose uh, talent has gotten much better with each product. So I think that's a very good thing there. Uh, one that I think is most notably is Jetstream Designs with the Marseille and the upcoming Little Rock Airport. Um, and again, these are just things that I discovered on FS developer. So I think that's a great place to to seek out new talent because it's not just the big developers out there that uh, I think need uh, the community behind them. I think it's these little guys that could definitely use uh, the, the support uh, without a doubt. So that, that's one thing. It's not just about covering the big guys, it's about covering the little guy too because you never know. At some point that little guy get really, really big and in the case of Tax of the Gate, which I'll cover in a bit, uh, that's definitely one area where we've seen one small developer get really huge and everyone's going crazy about. So. Just wanted to respond on behalf of that really quickly. Um, Japan airports. I don't know why we're not getting many developers heading in that direction, but based on just a lot of the feedback that I've seen over the last three to four years, 
there seems to be a huge, huge demand for Japan airports. Not many developers are going in that direction for some reason. Um, I don't know if it's maybe just a safety thing. Developing airports in the United States is very safe. Developing airports in the Europe, European Union uh, is very safe. And maybe Asia is just not seen as very safe because uh, the flight simulation community there is not very big, if one exists at all. But it seems that there are a number of people who visit these countries uh, on a regular basis to the point where they want these things done properly in the flight simulator. Uh, Oberlin did a tremendous job, I think, with these airports back in FS9, and I actually still use a few of them. But unfortunately, I don't know if these developing teams still exist. I don't know if they're still around. I have no idea what's going on there. The last screenshot that I saw of an airport in, develop, in development from Oberlin um, was a little over a year ago. So I don't know if they're still working on anything or not. So what we have now is Wing Creation, which is another one of those really small developers that's doing a tremendous job, and they're working their way up. They're stepping up their game. They've done two uh, projects so far. Fukushima and of course the Narita, but they're both, they're not the best, they're, they're definitely not flight beam or, or flight tampa quality, but they're getting there. I think that there's a lot of potential um, with this development group, and naturally there's just no way they're going to handle all of Japan on their own. I think they're still, you know, refining and, and, and really working on what their level of quality is going to be, so we can't put too much reliance on them. But um, I think Skysoft Simulation is, is definitely one thought. I think they're doing a great job with the Chinese airports that they've developed. And if you haven't tried any of their products, definitely give it a shot because it's a very, very talented developer. Um, but whether or not he'll work his way in Japan, I think, is, is probably unlikely. And that's just because China in and of itself, with its growth, has a lot of new airports and advanced airports there. And he would probably focus more on that. Um, but I think one developer that shows a lot of promise in the region is Imagine Simulations. Uh, going from Shanghai to Austin, I think there's some kind of mixed feelings there. I think some people are happy to get Austin, but some people obviously they want more airports in Asia and again, notably Japan. And if you look at the quality of Shanghai, it is remarkable. I was absolutely shocked the first time uh, I installed it on the system and took a look at it. And for a minute there, and I love you, Cal, you know I do. Uh, but for a minute there, I thought, wow, did he, like, you know, hire someone else <laughs> to develop this airport? And, and what I mean by saying that is that it really looked like Fly Tampa quality. And I'm thinking, wow, did he, like, get Martin in there or something like that? But, no, I mean, it's it's all 100% Imagine Sim. And, and essentially what Cal has done is he has stepped up his game tremendously. I mean, it is unbelievable. And if you haven't seen it yet, uh, naturally, when the FSX and prepared version come out, you will see it for yourself and you'll know just exactly what it is I'm talking about. And please don't complain that the FS9 version came out first. There's just no point in that. Even though certain projects may have an FS9 development first, and as opposed to, let's say, a native version of an FSX product, when you incorporate all of the FSX native features or prepared features, there's very little difference between the two. It's just a matter of time, and, and, and it is roughly, in Imagine Sim's case, a two-month difference. Um, Fly Tampa manages to do them both simultaneously as well as, uh, as what FSDT used to do and so on and so forth. But it is, it is more of a, of, a, of a time process issue, but it, it certainly isn't something that affects quality. So um, I would definitely say that if you still have FS9 on your system, definitely check it out. It is a, an amazing, just tremendous airport. So I definitely want to give a shout out to Imagine Sim there because uh, it is something that is going to shock you when you see it. Um, and just kind of furthering on that, Taxi to Gate, for example, two years ago, people were saying, why am I following these backyard airport developers? They're not important. They're not good. Stick with the Fly Tampas and the FSDTs and everything else. And uh, I chose to disregard those comments because I think that with the right amount of support for these smaller developers, I, I think that there's definitely a lot of potential. And it's easy to see where the potential is. I look at, for example, Blueprint, and I don't really see the potential. Over the course of the last six years, we haven't really seen much of a change. But you look at a company like Fly, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Taxi to Gate, you see a significant change from the, you know, the older Cuban and Mexican airports to where Taxi to Gate is now. I mean, it's literally night and day. It's, it's black and white. And all of you guys have really seemed to have gotten behind this team. And, of course, uh, with uh, Mexico City, with Orlando, which is, I mean, I, hear, I have not heard one complaint about either of those products, not even in regards to memory, and the Mexico City product is huge. Um, but now with the upcoming Istanbul, I think everyone is really excited about that. The numbers on Air Daily X just shot up like a rocket as soon as those exclusives hit. So uh, definitely, I have myself heard a lot of complaining that this airport isn't being done over the years, and now it's finally coming, and it seems to be coming rather quick. So I think 
uh, Tax City Gate is, is refining their efforts and their abilities so well that we may see, you know, maybe two or three more mega airports come from this team within the year. So um, definitely look, look forward to any future polls that might pop up because at the rate that this team is working in, it's amazing. And if you go back and look at Orlando and Mexico City, sorry, two Caribbean airports were released also during that time period. So a number of releases from Tax City Gate. Which brings me back to my next point is the, uh, the billboard. And um, I've gotten some really interesting feedback in regards to the, to the billboard on AvSim on behalf of uh, some uh, interesting characters over there. But uh, again, if anything, don't pay too much attention to the release dates. These are obviously based on my experience uh, tracking developments over, over a number of years. But ultimately, for you, it, to it shows you what's in development. And if you head over to that page, you're going to see just how long that list is. So if anything, it just gives you an idea to keep track of all the things that we can expect. Maybe they'll come in the, in the, in the coming months, maybe they'll come this year, maybe they'll come next year. And at, at worst case scenario, maybe some of them may get canceled. That just happens as reality. But if nothing else, it definitely shows you just how much is, is going on out there. And one of the things I'll work hard on trying to do is definitely keep track of everything that was released month over month. So it gives you an example of just how well my accuracy is but also it should give you an idea of what else is out there in case you happen to miss anything. Whereas before, we would just delete the releases. So now we'll keep them up there. That way you can look back and say, oh, I wonder what was released in January or February. And you can go back and look at it and go, oh, wow, I missed this or I missed that. So um, that's definitely one thing um, uh, that uh, I'll be keeping up with as well. So I'm um, probably going over my time limit here. So um, again, any feedback, please let me know. I appreciate a lot of the positive comments that I, uh, many of you have sent. Uh, much appreciate it. Um, hopefully we'll get some new contests going again soon. And uh, for those of you who are always sending me the emails and giving me the feedback in terms of uh, upcoming products and things that I might have missed, all those emails that you guys send, be it through email or through Facebook, I appreciate each and every single one of you because obviously I'm doing all of this on my own. And so as much feedback as you can provide me, as much assistance in terms of what's out there and what I'm missing, let me know. Um, we have some new developers coming on board this year. Uh, I can't say who they are yet, um, but they are names that you know. And uh, I can't say any of the projects. One project I did leak was New Orleans, which is in development. And these uh, developers will be announced um, soon in the coming months. I have already seen uh, some previews of the uh, work that's gone into some of these upcoming airports from these new development teams. And I can say that uh, it's some great stuff coming from 2014. So I think. Uh, flight simulation community as a whole. I think we've got some great stuff coming this year. Last year was absolutely incredible. I think last year was probably the best uh, year in flight simulation add-ons ever, just with the number of products that we've had all released in 2013. So uh, as to whether or not 2014 will match 2013, maybe not on an aircraft standpoint, because naturally um, Majestic released uh, the Q400 PMDG with the 777, and this year it will just be add-ons of remarkable aircraft like that. But I think Coronado is definitely on their game, as well as Alabeo, Rasbam, and another number of other developers as well. So I think we'll see some uh, a few great aircraft add-ons, but definitely a great many uh, scenery add-ons. So stay tuned, stick with us, give me your feedback about the video, what you liked, what you didn't like, should I keep doing this stuff? You know, let me know, and uh, cheers to the future.